We needed a project to grow our skills in Unreal Engine, and we decided to go with a classic spaceship corridor battle, because this cliche never gets old. For this project, we use 100% production crate assets, including the sci-fi corridors, the soldier, the robot character, some VFX, and one of our new sci-fi rifles. For the character animation, we wanted to try motion capture. How's that looking? <laughs> Great. This would allow us to get the exact movements that we needed to tell the story that we had in mind, rather than being stuck with trying to stitch together Mixamo animations. Chris performed the motions for both the soldier and the robot, going over several takes to refine the performance more and more. The new Rococo suit worked incredibly well for this. The takes were really clean and ready to go out of the box. If you're interested in a Rococo suit, check the link in the description. The team over there was extremely helpful and answered all of our questions. <laughs> so scary. While Chris and Nico were doing that, I imported our sci-fi corridors into Unreal Engine and started building out the scene. I knew we wanted a tight, claustrophobic corridor, but I hadn't seen any of the mocap animation yet, so I wanted to be able to quickly make any necessary changes later on in the pipeline. So I decided to build modular chunks using blueprints. If I had built the corridor piece by piece, then it would have been way too much to manage if Chris and Nico wanted a different layout later on down the line. But this way, I can select whole sections of the environment and move them around like sub-assemblies. Back at the studio, Nico exported all of our sequences and applied them to the characters. We picked one performance in particular. This let them build out the previous sequence and plan the camera angles that we really liked. Instead of going with too much handheld camera shake, we decided fixed cameras and somewhat odd angles felt more realistic because in a tight corridor, there's not much room for a cameraman, but GoPros and security camera perspectives make sense. They make the shots feel more like we were witnessing a real moment instead of watching something that was heavily produced. For some of these long shots, we wanted them to feel more like a point of view. So we went with a 200 millimeter lens to really mimic that effect. Once I got the motion capture data, I tried to find the best spot to put the actor. My original idea was to have him in this room over here, shooting down the corridor at an intruder, but Chris had the idea to swap it around so that he's trapped in the small end of the corridor and that the door won't open. Kind of like that famous Darth Vader scene from Rogue One. That really ramped up the tension. After reviewing the previs and blocking out all the action, I realized that I needed to add these little crates for him to hide behind. With that locked down, it was time to edit the motion capture animation because you're almost never going to get data that perfectly fits your scene or your character. So for example, Chris wasn't wearing bulky armor, so I had to move his arms away from his chest. And when I put the rifle into his trigger hand, the front hand didn't quite line up. Fortunately, our sci-fi soldier is rigged for Unreal Engine already, so we were very quickly able to set up an automatic rig inside of the latest Unreal Engine and edit his pose. If you want to try it out for yourself, download the Unreal version of our sci-fi character and follow along with this quick tutorial from Rococo. It's actually super easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. By the time they had sent me the motion capture information, I was already well into lighting the scene. I used volumetric fog to make these bluish hallway lights look smoky and dingy. And for the red emergency lighting, I created a material that would cause them to flicker as if the backup power on the spaceship was failing. Once we finished blocking out the action, I was able to animate some lights to act as muzzle flashes on our soldier character, as well as some red lights flying down the hallway to represent laser beams from the enemy. I'm not very experienced with effects in Unreal Engine, so I knew I was going to composite some lasers into the shot later on with After Effects, but I still wanted red light to be cast into the scene to ground them in the shot. Our original idea was to have the red lasers come out of sort of a cloud of smoky blackness at the other end of the hallway. Again, an homage to the Darth Vader shot. So I hopped into Niagara inside of Unreal Engine to build some smoke. It was my first time using Niagara, but surprisingly, it was really easy. This smoke is actually pretty close to just the default settings. I just made sure that the volume was big enough for the scene and that the buoyancy setting was flipped so that the smoke would flow downward like a CO2 leak or something. Let off some steam. We decided that we actually did want to see at least a hint of the bad guy at the end of the hallway. So Chris hopped back into the motion capture suit for another quick session. For the enemy, we used this evil robot model from Render Crate. He's rigged with Mixamo, so the Rococo animations applied directly to the character with no fuss at all. Unfortunately, he's not rigged for the Unreal skeleton, so I wasn't able to make that one-click control rig for him, but Chris's performance was actually pretty close to what we wanted, so I just made some quick adjustments to the arms in Blender. Without the Rococo suit, it would have been a huge ordeal to add this character to our scene, but the whole process only took a couple of hours. The next step was to actually set up all of our cameras. For a detailed tutorial on how to do this in Unreal Engine, check out our previous video on the topic here. Good, I'm learning. This time the process went extremely smoothly because once again, Chris and Nico were able to quickly iterate and create previs animations for me to work from. The combination of Unreal Engine and the Rococo suit made it really easy for us as a team to work remotely. If I needed an update to the animation while blocking out the scene, 
Chris and Nico could send me a new performance within minutes. And if they wanted to art direct my lighting, I was able to make instant real-time updates for them without waiting for any renders. And speaking of rendering, that's the last step inside of Unreal Engine, which of course I cover in more detail in that video that I mentioned a minute ago, if you need a step-by-step -step breakdown. But this time, I quickly ran into a couple of issues. The Niagara fluid smoke didn't show up in my renders. So I did a little bit of research and discovered that I need to pre-cache it before rendering. That fixed my issue. But I also had a similar problem involving the ragdoll animation at the end. And maybe one of you knows how to fix this because I wasn't able to figure it out. So while rendering, I'm using temporal anti-aliasing to create the motion blur effect. Basically it renders 64 subframes per frame of animation and then just smears them all together. But the ragdoll simulation kind of freaks out. It seems to think that each subframe is a full frame, so the poor guy was bouncing around in limbo for minutes on end from his perspective. I tried to bake the ragdoll simulation, but it didn't work. So leave a comment if you know how to make a ragdoll sim work inside of the sequencer in Unreal Engine. The last step was to drop in some effects from Footage Crate. I really wanted some beefy muzzle flares for the rifle. For this, I actually like to use two different flashes to make it seem like the explosion is changing shape and evolving over time. And for the laser impacts, I took more inspiration from Star Wars and tried to find the sparkiest explosions that we have. From there, I passed it back to Chris and Nico for sound and color, and it was done. We had a blast working on this project together, and it was really fun to try to refine our Unreal Engine workflow to try to figure out how to integrate mocap data from Rococo into our projects. A lot of the steps were new to us, but we found that they were nowhere near as scary as we thought. In fact, everything was actually pretty easy. If you're thinking of integrating Unreal Engine into your VFX pipeline, I encourage you to just jump in and try something. And as always, if you come up with anything cool using any of these techniques, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or post it to the Discord. All right, later creators.